moments in Canadian soccer is brought to you by Agfa Film. Sweeney gets it across. Great moments in Canadian soccer has been brought to you by Agfa Film. Nothing escapes Agfa Film. TSN World Cup Exhibition Soccer is brought to you by Molson Breweries, where every beer is brewed totally free of preservatives. By the new Gillette Sensor XL and Gillette Series. Gillette, the best a man can get. By Canadian Airlines. Canadian Airlines is proud to be a sponsor of World Cup Soccer. And by MasterCard. No other card is accepted in more places worldwide than MasterCard. Not Visa, not American Express. MasterCard, your card for life. Fielder number 15, Nick Dasevich. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Varsity Stadium in Toronto and TSN's continuing coverage of World Cup Exhibition Soccer. And today, it's Germany against Canada on a spectacular late spring day in front of a sellout crowd. The temperature about 17 degrees Celsius. That's about 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Not much of a wind to speak about, and as we say, it is crystal blue skies, Graham Leggett. As we now welcome from Edmonton, Alberta, Anna Maria Kaufman. Anna Marie Kaufman, a native of Edmonton, who now makes her home in Europe and is a star of stage screen and all of German speaking Europe. Anna Maria Kaufmann with the German and Canadian national anthems in front of 20,000 here at Varsity Stadium in Toronto as we are now moments away from kickoff Germany in their final game before kicking it off against Bolivia in World Cup 94 and here are the starting 11 Graham and Bertie Wurz is going with a flexible 5-3-2 Bodo Elner in goal at the back Struns Bremer Kohler 
and Thomas Berthold. Lotta Mateus will also be at the back playing sweeper libero. In midfield is Basler Samer on Hassler and the French connection Buller and Klinsmann up front. As the two captains meet at midfield to exchange pennants, Lotta Mateus and Colin Miller. You see the referee there, that is Mr. Stephen Lodge to do the coin flip. All these officials are from England. Working the near side lines one will be Brian Whittington, Mark Warren the far side, and Michael Reed, the fourth official. So if we take a look at the starting 11 for head coach Bob Leonard Uzi. And Bobby's going with a 4-2-4, Forrest and Gold, Yallop, Watson, Samuel and Fraser, the back four, Miller, Hooper, Dasevich and Onger in midfield, and Carlo Corazine and Eddie Berdusco up front. And there he is, Mr. Stephen Lodge from Barnsley. And as we say, all these officials, all four from England. And Graham, they're going to work the remainder of this Canada exhibition series. Well, some people say he has an impossible job, Verdi Voits, to take over from Franz Beckenbauer and possibly leave Germany to a second straight World Cup title as we are underway from Varsity Stadium in Toronto. It is Canada against Germany. And Graham, we expect a much different game, this game, as compared to Canada against Brazil. Yes, indeed, Canada very much on a high after time with Brazil, but this is a totally different opponent. Brazil allowed Canada play a little. Germany are so totally efficient, well prepared, that this will be a severe challenge for the Canadian side. Bodo Ildner has his first touch. For Thomas Struns, Samer in front of Lyndon Hooper. And now Frank Yallop will play it back. Craig Forrest, wide left. Jeff Onger keeps it in play. Mark Watson plays it square near side for Ian Fraser. Oh, the pass for Hooper is intercepted by Matthias Samer. Fraser with the throw in as he looks for Carlo Corosi. Andreas Bremer. For Rudy Fuller. Get out, get out. Klinsman is at the top of the box. Sammer tries the square ball looking for Bosler on the right wing. And Jeff Honger will play it back. You noticed anything already about the Germans compared to the Brazilians? Well, it's a little early. Two minutes into the game, they're just trying to get acclimatized. Obviously, they're, they're a much more aggressive side. They'll play a lot more through balls to Voller and Klinsmann rather than build it up. But this is going to be a severe test. The holders, obviously, it's going to be a severe test. Colin Miller, the Canadian captain, makes the overlapping run from midfield. Now, Lyndon Hooper. Lyndon Hooper getting the start in midfield. Didn't against Brazil. Here's an opportunity as Verdusco tries to make the run around Jurgen Kohler. Bobby Leonard Ducey has to be extremely pleased. A 1-1 tie against Morocco, and then that thrilling draw, 1-1 against Brazil. Everyone's saying, you know, you're going to play Spain and Brazil. And Germany says they're all too close. And then, of course, it probably finishes up with Holland. But they're all too close. Nobody can really get worried. He doesn't have time to. Struns for Jürgen Kohler. Mario Bosler slides it through for Klinsmann and too far and into the open arms. Of awaiting Craig Forrest, who was absolutely brilliant in that 1-1 tie against Brazil. And Craig Forrest read that through Borwell. Beautiful little chip through. Klinsman couldn't quite reach it in time. And Frank Yellop, Jeff Onger. Little head through now. Carlo Corazine and headed back by Kohler to Ilgner. Lothar Mateos, the German captain with his first touch. We are still early, three minutes in. First half, Germany, Canada from Varsity Stadium in Toronto. Thomas Berthold. 
Thomas Hassler gets it caught up. The field in tremendous condition here at Varsity Stadium on the campus of the University of Toronto. Strunz at midfield between Verdusco and Corazine tries to slide it through and played very well by the back four of Canada. But already we've seen Germany do what Brazil failed to do at Commonwealth Stadium is get behind the Canadian defense. These diagonal balls beautifully played through from the midfielders. Corazine tries to get turned, can't, shields it well, plays it off to Andre. Now to Lyndon Hooper. He plays it square. Frazier near side. This is Dasovich. His first touch, a little give and go with Hooper. Nice sliding tackle by Ivana Sammer to bring him down. And then Klinsman couldn't get away for Germany. Berthold loses it. Hooper. But then Berthold gets yeah. back. Coming in from behind. Free kick. And it's Matthias Sammer. The 26-year-old, one of only two former East Germans to crack this national team. Well, Hope was in possession, but Sammer comes in from behind. Not the tackling foot, but the following leg. That's where the free kick occurred. Frank Yellup from Ipswich curves it for the far post. Up gets Randy Samuel. Corner. And it'll be a corner as it went off the German defender, Thomas Strunz. From FC Cologne, he's been a member of the national team since 87. Bodu Ilgner, the 27-year-old, a member of the 90 World Cup winning side. Jeff Onger is there, so is Hooper Onger will curve it far post, uh, no problem for Bodo. Like picking apples off a tree for Bodo Ilgner. Tall goalkeeper, great hands. Germany's got about four goalkeepers who could all play in the World Cup. Jurgen Klinsmann will give it to Ian Fraser for the throw in Canada. We played just over six minutes, still scoreless, Canada and Germany at midfield. Klinsmann lays it off as Thomas Strunz has moved up now from his right fullback spot. And then he just gives it away. Wide left for Canada and at midfield, this is Jeff Onger. Looks into the middle for Verdusco and expected Verdusco to turn and Eddie didn't. Thomas Bertold can't control. Bremer for Jürgen Kohler and back as Verdusco gives chase. Just as we saw in Edmonton, the game against Brazil, the coaches, because this is a friendly and it's agreed to, will be able to make up to six substitutions. So we'll expect to see wholesale changes come the second half. Frank Yellup giving chase under some pressure. Well played, goal kick. As Rudy Voller applied the pressure on Frank Yellup. Well, Yellup was in two minds, whether to knock it behind for a corner kick or play it back to Craig Forrest. Did the wise thing. He, he tried to knock it for a corner kick, and Voller deflected it for a goal kick. But an awkward situation, that would have been for Craig Forrest to midfield. Ian Frazier. This time plays it back. Forrest does well to get it to midfield. Jurgen Kohler wins the battle in the air with Eddie Verdusco. And good play by Mark Warren, the linesman on the far side. Klinsman had gone forward into an offside position, but because it had gone through to Forrest, allowed play to go on. Kohler again. This time with Carlo Corazine. Big man at the back for Germany. Struns, Kohler, Berthold, Bremer, and Sama. Boy, they're all about six foot tall. Berdusko and Corazine have got no chance in the air against these. Colin Miller. And the first good opportunity of the game from a good distance, granted, belongs to Colin Miller. I wouldn't describe it as a good opportunity. I would describe it as a hopeful effort from 40 yards out, but not bad to try it from there because the German defense is so disciplined it's going to be very tough to get in behind them. The head coach, Bertie Voigts, and his team training in Ottawa, Saga, Ontario, about an hour north 
of Toronto as they get acclimatized to a number of things, the time change. He brought them over a week early. The time change and also the weather. They expect the humidity to be a factor in this World Cup and something that they're not quite used to in, in parts of Europe. Well, they won't get acclimatized to humidity today in Toronto. This is only about the second day of summer we've had here, and this is very pleasant for both sides to play in. Mateus. Thomas Struns has a look. Struns into the middle for Rudy Voller. Klinsman's at the top of the box. He puts it to Mateos, who has the look. This is Sammer. Sammer turns. Oh, and quickly surrounded as Ooh, Nick Dasevich was back. And that could well have been a free kick against Craig Forrest because Nick Dasevich played the ball back to the goalkeeper. Referee judging that it was a tackle and it wasn't really played back on purpose, but uh, <laughs> that could quite easily have gone as a free kick. Eddie Verdusco with the foul backing into Berthold. Mr. Stephen Lodge handling this game as well as Canada's game against Spain and the concluding game next Sunday against Holland. That's where Ca Canada have to be so careful today. The Germans so good at these long balls and running in behind the defenders. They cannot afford to leave one-on-ones. There has to be a covering defender there. Little give and go doesn't work between Dasovich and Lyndon Hooper. Lyndon Hooper, Jeff Onger, Eddie Berdusco are the three lineup changes from the starting 11 that took the field against Brazil. And they deserved the place the way they played against Brazil in the second half. Oh, Mateo sees the empty space, takes it, and now he lays it off. This is Thomas Struns. Bosler is on the right. Bosler lays back, and now Struns makes the run up the wing and into the area, and he's gently nudged away from play by Frank Yallop. And already you see the difference in styles. The Brazilians love to play at the feet, work it in little patterns. The Germans like to play it in front of the front runners, let them run onto it. Uh, both sides very effective with different styles. Mark Watson has Hooper at midfield, but Hooper can't control, and it's Sammer. Mm. Dasevich, Colin Miller, under some pressure from Voller, and he has Frazier now near side. Looks for Corazine, but Bertold, as you say, the height advantage is evident very early with the Germans and the forwards of Canada. Yeah, I think that Eddie and Carlo will have a tough time winning the ball in the air. But then if you look at the whole Canadian side as opposed to the German side, the height differential is tremendous. Frank Yallop looking for Carlo Corazine. Come on, goal, Eddie come on. Berdusco won't get there in time. And it's corner a kick. corner for Canada. Good challenge by Carlo Corazine. Just got in the face of Kohler, as they say. Jeff Honger. Hooper, Jeff Honger. You can hear Bodo Ilgner. Look at the right wing. Oh, he's gone the wrong way. He gave it to Klinsman, who steps over the tackle of Nick Dasevich. Frank Yallop down this right wing. Controlled by Bremer and into touch. You know, Vic, to put this game into perspective, Germany have played 68 World Cup games, won 39, lost 14, tied 15, 145, 490 against. Canada played three, won nil, lost three, tied nil. Carlo Corazine, edge of the box, can't get it across. Mateos is there. And finally cleared by Germany as Thomas Hassler, Bremer, near sideline, keeps it in play. Looking for Voller. Sammer. Lovely bit of touch. Thomas Hassler and then Matthias Sammer is down for Germany. As we say, Sammer just one of two players, former East Germans, to make this now national team of Germany. And once again, Colin Miller coming in just a little late. The ball had gone. Sammer had pushed it square. 
and referee Stephen Lodge right on the spot to blow it down. He used to play for Dinamo Dresden. Ooh, look out. Thomas Hassler giving chase. Ian Fraser there to mark him. Hassler edge of the box, lays it off. This is Bremer. Cuts it in for Klinsman. And then Klinsman. As you can see, Klinsman trying to talk it over with Voller. I expected you to run here, and you didn't. Yeah, and Voller saying, I expected you to let it run to me, and I would have laid. Oh, that's a free kick. He has to be booked for that. That is not the done thing, and Rudy Voller knows it. That was bad. Very, very bad. But it shows you that this is no friendly. This is a, this is a World Cup warm-up game a dress rehearsal Buller knows he can't put his foot in there that should have been a yellow card I think mr. Stephen Lodge being very generous to allow Buller to, to keep going without being carded if you thought this was a friendly folks you just got an indication that there's no such thing well certainly the the Germans attitude I think to the game changed dramatically after the 1-1 one -one tie Canada played against Brazil they well, studied the tapes after practice yesterday yeah but the German attitude is always the same look that this is the last game they're ever going to play and they want to win it and that's what's carried them through so many World Cups the never say die attitude the will to win the discipline it's incredible Randy Samuel plays it to midfield Dick Howard we apologize for the audio problems as the crowd responds to the nice tackle by Frank Yellow as Canada now bring it back towards the Germans Verdusco tries to work the give and go with Corazine Jeff Hunter with the sliding tackle and it will be a throw in for Canada. Good ball. They play it square to a wide open Mateus. And Loda Mateus always available offside there by Hessler, but Loda Mateus. You will notice in this game is is always available. He's playing libero, semi sweeper. He really doesn't have a responsibility to pick anybody up, but he covers his defenders and he makes himself available for the ball out of defense. And boy, can he ever use it? The all-time leading international for Germany, Lothar Matthäus. And he could well be come the 17th of July, the first captain to ever lift the World Cup twice in a row. Brazil and Italy have won it in consecutive years, but uh, the same captain did not lift the trophy. Lodar Mateus could well be the very first ever. Played just over 15 minutes, still scoreless. Germany and Canada from Varsity Stadium in Toronto. And we welcome viewers joining us in the United States on Prime Network. Hassler. And surrounded by Canadians, Hassler. Buller joins in as well now. Onger can't get away. In very close quarters along that sideline. Berthold. Mateus. As they play it back now for Jurgen Kohler. Klinsman. And he played it by Kohler to midfield, but Kohler does well. Thomas Struns wide right. And hooked into the box, and no problem as Rudy Voller made a late challenge on Craig Forrest. Randy Samuel. Looking for Carlo Corazine. No contest as Jurgen Kohler just towers above Carlo Corazine. Big center back is huge. 
Ian Frazier gives it away to Klinsman. Bowler chips it looking for Sammer, and then Sammer and Frazier collide. <laughs> Well, I think this is six to one and half a dozen of the other as they both tussle for the ball. Little extracurricular activity after the ball had gone out of touch. Germany and Canada were still scoreless way through this first half. Mateos chips it forward oh, 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 look. as he looks for Hassler. And it's headed back very neatly by Frank Yallop, who has looked very strong, starting at center back for Canada. Eddie Verdusco, one of the few times a Canadian has won the volley. Corazine just can't get up and over Kohler and hasn't so far and probably won't. Colin Miller chips it forward, looking for for Verdusco. Bertold. Beautiful. Dangerous, Kohler. but beautiful. <laughs> Mateus looks for a breaking Klinsman, but well read by Randy Samuel. Brema looking for Klinsman, but Yallop is there. Lyndon Hooper to take control for Canada. through midfield and the whistle Dick Howard yes Vic one of the things Bobby Lindy is concerned about on the bench is the amount of space that uh, Jeff Orange is allowing Strunz and Basler down the right side of the German uh, team uh, they're getting a lot of opportunity and Bobby getting onto Jeff to try and close them down and not allow that space <laughs> The German training staff is out very quickly, and that's the one thing in these friendlies that, as a team going to the World Cup, you hopefully don't run into, and that is injuries. Yeah, that's the one thing that the coach fears, to, to get a serious injury, because this is, I would think, Germany's starting lineup for opening day against Bolivia. This is their full side. Who oh, miss hit, but it squirts over to Jeff Honger. Ooh. Frank Yellop now to midfield. Wide on the left, Carlo Corazine will play it back for the captain, Colin Miller from St. Johnstone's in the Scottish Premier Division. Mark Watson. Over the head of Corazine, and Kohler handled it very easily. Now this is Nick Dasovich. Heads it back. Ian Fraser plays his soccer with the Colorado Foxes of the APSL. Corazine. Kohler is there. Nick Dasovich tries to curl it in. Can't chest it down. Verdusco stealing. Verdusco! Verdusco with the best opportunity of the game. It remains scoreless. Germany, Canada. World Cup Exhibition Soccer on TSN. To prove that armor all with that's that X, keep your dad looking clean. We're here at the Densier Go 500. Well, there you have it. Armor All with Dust Ad X keeps your dash looking clean. Introducing Super Grid, the barbecue grill that eliminates flare-ups. Imagine chicken, steaks, ribs, chops, and burgers grilled to perfection every time. You'll never burn another meal. We guarantee it. Barbecuing has never been better. Super Grid, from quality at these fine stores. Welcome back to Varsity Stadium in Toronto as Carlo Corazine makes an onside run. Plays it into the middle for Hooper, but just too many players as Matthias read it so well, Graham. Beautifully read. Matthias was anticipating that short pass all the time and then used it beautifully to put it out to the right wing for Basler. And Jeff Onger, as Basler didn't expect that kind of coverage as Onger was on his back. In fact, Basler looked for the foul from the referee and didn't get it now it opens up here's the little angled run and it is offside offside Jurgen Klinsmann called by the far side lineman Mr. Mark Warren just moved a little too quickly and was offside Bobby realizes this what a great effort by Eddie Berdusco spins hits it 
Oh, and it's just Eastern inches wide. Great effort by the hero of the Brazil game, Eddie Berdusco, who plays his club soccer now in Switzerland. Again, the battle between Corazine and Kohler is won by Kohler. Brema, top of the box, under some pressure to Kohler. And now to Brema, who will bring it up this right wing. Ahead for Thomas Hassler. Yeah, that's Ian Fraser coming in from behind again. Just give him a little wrap in the back of the calf. And, and that is something we should look for probably in the World Cup. That's an automatic now, isn't it? Well, FIFA put out a directive uh, to clamp down on tackling from behind, and I think it's long overdue. Brema had a look, and now he'll go back to the captain. Mateos to Bertold. Oh, and he almost gives it away. Lyndon Hooper. Randy Samuel has a look. Chips it up this right wing for Corazine as they try to get Corazine away from Kohler. And Verdusco may be guilty of getting the foot in on Mateus. Well, I think it was Mateus' skill that caused that. He just sucked Eddie Verdusco in and uh, was past him. Look out. Downfield and too far for Matthias Sammer. But I think it's a compliment to Canada that Right now, Lothar Mateus is playing behind his two centre-backs as a sweeper. He started off in front of them as a libero. And the way Canada's playing, he obviously thinks he has to go back in defence. Eddie Berdusco, the challenge by Kohler, no foul. Play on, says Mr. Stephen Lodge. Frazier looks for Corazine, but Corazine waited for the pass, and Sammer came around and was able to take it. As Bosler now has come to this left wing as the Germans have swapped their wingers. Hassler has gone to the right and Bosler has come to the left. Well, that may actually help Canada because Nick Dasovich does a super job of filling in that gap that Bobby Lenarduzzi was concerned about with Jeff Unger. Look who's making the run up that right wing. It is Mateus. Bowler, Klinsler are in the box. Oh. Mateus plays it back for Bosler. Hassler. Struns, Hassler, Kohler at midfield. Gets away from Corazine. Kohler oh. has a look. Voller. Rudy Voller. Hooper marking him, trying to keep him square. Brema. Offside. Voller. The call is for offside. They don't get it. Voller cuts it across. And Frank Yallop is there. And now this is Ian Frazier. Graham, you almost want to hold your breath. <laughs> well, that's true. Turn, turn, Certainly end-to-end -end action, and uh, the Germans expected this to be a nice little warm-up for them. Uh, they're getting a little surprised, but... Very nice little touch as Verdusco was able to chest it down to Corazine, but the return pass is read so well by the Germans. In this case, it was Kohler. It's been sold out for weeks. 20,000 standing room only for this World Cup exhibition prior to USA 94 between Germany and Canada from Varsity Stadium in Toronto. Kohler, Hassler, and he'll play it back. Randy Samuel will win the ball in the air. Now, this is Hassler. Klinsman, Buller. Make their runs into the box. Bossler. Brema. Great ball. Mateos, wide open, right side. Mateos gets by Onger. And then Bertusco with a lovely sliding tackle against the world class. Both on Mateos. Great challenge back by Eddie Bertusco to cut down the threat of. Just look at it again. Coming in from behind, he makes sure he doesn't make contact with Mateus. Gets the ball, pushes it wide. Excellent tackle for a striker, especially. Jeff Archer. 
This is Mark Watson. Chips it past the forwards. And Mark Watson and Ian Fraser of switch fullback positions. Mark Watson played right back against Brazil. And Ian Fraser left back. They've switched over today. Obviously, Bobby wants uh, Mark Watson out on the right wing against Hessler, but Hessler's had enough. He's coming over here to try uh, Ian Fraser. Sammer through the middle. It's opening up. This is Bosler. Nick Dasovich. Bosler for Klinsman. And it'll squirt to Mark Watson very calmly. Nice one, two, three, and Jeff Hondra on the left wing. There's a dramatic difference, Graham. I don't know. I, I suspect you've seen it too. There's a there's a calmness now about this Canadian side that we haven't seen in the past. Well, there's a confidence too, and the, there's a willingness to retain the ball and try and take people on and look for someone to push it short instead of hit it long. And it's very encouraging. Corazine. Jeff Onger chips it through. Berdusco is there. Kohler is right on his back. Now Hassler will join in. And with Hassler's help, the Germans win the ball. Well, Eddie Berdusco made a great challenge back. Hassler just made one on Eddie there, so they're all square at one each. Klinsman yes. looks for Bowler. Randy Samuel giving chase. Klinsman is at the top of the area. Bremer. And back. Bremer. Bowler will now dart for the top of the area hit it in yes it is Sammer one nothing Germany what a beautiful left foot Bremer has oh. as soon he was all alone on the left wing danger was written all over that cross Andreas Bremer has got a magic left foot and the header well the header was just a formality no challenge, all alone, no chance for Craig Forrest, one to nil. Beautiful left foot, magnificent cross, powerful header, but no challenge. Ten out of ten for that goal, one to nil, Germany. Matthias Sammer, who plays his soccer with Borussia Dortmund, scores in the 30th minute, and Germany has the one nothing lead. Frank Yellow will take this free kick. Randy Samuel has moved up. He plays it short, top of the area. Jeff Hunter. Oh, it skipped off a defender and into the diving arms of Voto Wilkner. Strunz plays it for Ilgner. Bremer is on the left. Berthold is on the right. And he'll give it to Berthold. Mateus. Mateus turns away from Anger. Looks for Klinsman. Colin Miller. Verdusco. Hooper. Mark Watson under some pressure and now the Canadians oh. are feeling all kinds of it Jurgen Klinsmann oh my goodness it was there and he just stumbled a little bit Graham hesitated a little bit it's unlike Jurgen Klinsmann to hesitate he's usually very positive that he's through runs but I think he was looking to see if he should lay it off while he made his mind up Randy Samuel came back got a little touch and Craig Forrest tied it up but the Germans really showing that this is a, a real test, a real game, a dress rehearsal for the defense of the World Cup title, and they're playing like world champions. The aggressiveness is in this game that we didn't see in the Brazil game. The intensity and the aggression. Throw in quickly taken. Jeff Onger looking for some help. Carlo Corazine and Hassler gets back, and it will be another corner for Canada. Thomas Hassler, midfield player for AS Roma, really doing well at coming back and helping his defense. Obviously, along with Lothar Matthias, the two small men in the German side, everybody else is huge. Randy Samuel has moved up. Colin Miller has joined them in the box. 
cut in, looking for Randy Samuel. Kohler is down and clutching the back of his head. He collided with Randy Samuel as they both went bravely for that cross. Jurgen Kohler took it right on the back of the head as Randy Samuel challenged. Randy Samuel also holding his head. He probably off treatment too. This is, as you said, what Berti Vox does not want to see. Injury timeout. Germany with a 1-0 lead. World Cup Exhibition Soccer on TSN. Here's Andre Bunbury! Great moments in Canadian soccer he is brought to you by Agfa Film. Sweeney gets it across. Kessler! Oh. Bunbury. Mobile! Canadian soccer has been brought to you by Agfa Film. Nothing escapes Agfa Film. A concerned German bench and head coach, Bertie Votes, has the defender, 28-year-old Jurgen Kohler from Juventus, is still down and being treated after that collision, Graham. Well, when two big men meet, you can hear the clash up here. Randy Samuel and Jurgen Kohler go for the ball. You can see the impact. Oh, that, you don't like to see that, but luckily, Jurgen Kohler is on his feet. Bertie Vogt breathes a sigh of relief. Randy Samuel's okay, so Mr. Stephen Lodge of Barnsley will drop the ball in midfield and say, let's get on with it. Kohler has been a member of the German national team since 1986 and was a member of the 90 winning team. As so many players, Graham. Still with this team, it's such a veteran side, and it is a team that is also getting a little aged now. Well, aged is a euphemism. I know it's it's experience is what counts with the German side, and they have this this discipline. They have this ability to to create opportunities from absolutely nothing. And Bertie Vox must be delighted to have so many veterans in his side because they come up through the system. He doesn't have to change a thing. He just takes over and picks the team. Jeff Andre tries to chip it through. Mateos is back. And then Sammer will clear. Jeff Andre looking for Verdusco. And Kohler is right there. Struns. Is back as well. <laughs> Own goal of this first half from Matthias Sammer at 30 minutes has Germany on top, one nothing. midfield Matthäus Bremer Bremer has a look ships it looking for Voller Samuel was there for Canada Bosler gives it away Dick Howard yes Vic uh, just interesting talking to Jürgen Klinsmann yesterday about the management styles of Bertie Volks as opposed to Franz Beckenbauer Volks more a tracksuit coach on the field with the players Beckenbauer very much letting his assistants do in the job but obviously, when you've got talent that the Germans are, uh, you don't have problems there. But certainly a different style, he says, and they've both got their strengths and maybe their weaknesses, but certainly no weaknesses in the game today, that's for sure. Struns to midfield. And in fact, there was some problem between these former teammates, assistant and head coach, Beckenbauer and Vogt. And I guess it had to do with the German replay. <laughs> Yeah, well, the differences are settled now. Actually, they were teammates in 74 when Germany won the World Cup. Well, there's no such thing as a friendly. Big number 16, Sammer, tackled by Colin Miller. Then Jeff Runger comes diving in. Sammer is furious, but uh, all it resulted in was a throw in. Frank Yellup, deep on the left wing, looking for Carlos Corazine. Can't keep it in play. And in fact, the argument between votes 
And Beckenbauer was over the release of players, one for Nashville, and then I guess he wanted some for Bayern, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, there's always there's always a club and country conflict when there's important issues at stake, like cup finals and league titles, and the, the national team manager always thinks that he has the first call to the players, and the club manager always thinks because he's playing, paying the players, he should have first call on them. Kohler not happy with the call from Mr. Stephen Lodge, but it presents a, an opportunity now to see this free kick and the German defensive wall. Well, the German defensive wall is certainly tall enough. It'd be pretty tough to chip it over it. Frank Yellow. Uh, awkward ball to hit when it's pushed wide like that and you're trying to hit it round the wall. Frank Yallop cut it a little too much, and it was no challenge at all for Bodo Eldner, the FC Cologne goalkeeper. He scored some great free kicks for Ipswich Town. He can certainly crack them, Frank. Eldner, past midfield as Samuel wins the ball in the air with Klinsman. Verdusco to Hooper, a little give and go, looking for the angle run, cut off neatly by Struns. Thomas Berthold for Germany. Hassler, wide right. Bosler is now wide left. Struns uh -oh. ahead and okay. onside. My goodness, Bowler has an opportunity. Bowler, Bowler, oh my goodness, it danced along the goal line. The Canadians looking at the far side lines and Mr. Mark Warren looking for the offside. They didn't get it. No, and it was a brilliant run by Rudy Vola. Just timed his run perfectly to coincide with the pass. He was going forward as the red shirts were coming out. And it, it was a brilliant run. Forrest does all he can, but look at Klinsman right in the middle waiting for the ball to be cut back. And he'll be saying something to Rudy Vola right now as Basler just cannot put it in from the tough angle. Great run by Bola, but he should really have cut it back to Jurgen Klinsmann, who just had a tap in. And on the play, Frank Yellop looked to get all tied up, Graham, and maybe step over his own feet awkwardly because he's down in the goal area. Yeah, it looked as if he turned an ankle trying to just overstretch to cut out that cross. Uh, the Canadians, as we said earlier, have to be very careful about being caught square. They were caught square there with no cover at all. Peeled for offside, didn't get it. Yeah, look at Frank as he's trying to reach back for it on his standing ankle, and it just turns. But no chance at all for Basler to cut it in from that angle. These through balls by the Germans and the, the timing of the runs are going to cause the Canadian defense all sorts of problems all afternoon unless they get a cover deep inside there. Bremer hooks it upfield. Yallop seemingly not bothered by that ankle now as he nods it back for his keeper Forrest. A yeah, little nudge by number two, Thomas Struns. Really didn't have to nudge Eddie there. There was no danger that Eddie was gonna beat Thomas Struns to the ball, but the German fullback called for the foul and uh, waiting for Randy Samuel to get up to the far post. Looking for Randy Samuel, who had moved up at Bertold, won that battle. Mateo, so lovely. Now watch Mateo spring into the attack and the through ball is Mateo. Now it's ahead for Klinsman. Bowler is up as well. And they cut it back and off of Frazier, and it will be a German corner. My goodness, how quickly they can go from defense to offense. That's one of the strengths, the transition from the back to the front. And it's the old man, Lothar Matthias, who was showing the way. In fact, the younger players couldn't get up to support him. Bremer will take this corner as the referee asks that Jeff Onger take his 10 yards back. Bremer cuts it. Headed away. Opportunity. And Bosler was right there and rattled it off the outside of the post. German very, very good at set plays. Bremer's left foot 
All the big men come into the far post and they play it to the far post. Clipped on, number 21, Basler wraps it, covered by Forrest off the post. But the Germans bring the big men to the middle of the goal, then knock it over them to a, to a trailer coming in. And uh, it's been very effective in the warm-up games in America earlier this year. We're into the final couple of minutes here oh. in the first half. one nothing Germany on the goal by Matthias Sammer. Nick Dasovic. Mateos, a little nod forward by Klinsman, has Rudy Volok. Bremer makes a run on the left. Sammer following up through the middle, and now Sammer will take it himself. Corazine over to mark him, and Jeff Onger joins in. Hassler overlaps. Mark Watson to have a go at him. Corner and it'll kick. curve into the corner of the net. And Hassler will take this corner for Germany in the dying moments of this first half. Klinsman and Fuller are the only players up in the box. Corazine coming back to Mark. Heads it away. Hassler, deep right. Now Kohler is up, and this time it is Mark Watson. As the Canadians are under all kinds of pressure late in this first half. And we suspect that Mr. Stephen Lodge will add some time on for injury. Chip forward, looking for Verdusco. And then Mateos coming through and... Apparently looking like he puts a shoulder into the back of Verdusco. Play on, says the referee. Randy Samuel, Lyndon Hooper trying to control. Now he plays it square, and Frazier is going to have to hustle to keep it in play. Frazier looking for Verdusco. Oh, goodness! Where did Jeff Onger come from? That's where the Germans are wondering, because suddenly Onger was in a great position. Crept in on the blind side behind Thomas Struens. Unfortunately for Canada, Jeff Unger goes to the near post instead of hitting a, a cross goal to the far post. Nice header, but well covered by Bodo Ildner. Header to the far post. He could well have got a rebound off the goalkeeper, but to the near post, no chance to sneak it past Ildner. Randy Samuel back for Canada with Hassler going step for step get out, get out. quickly in this is Klinsman Klinsman for Bremer who plays it square Sammer Strunz makes the run and then Yallop following up and it'll be Thomas Strunz now on the far side with the throw in for Germany get out, get out, get out. Wuller faces two Canadians and loses cleared away by the keeper Forrest and it'll be a throw in for Canada. Well, I was expecting, and I maybe no disrespect to the Canadians, I expected them to maybe fall apart a little bit after giving the goal. Full credit to them for not. No, but you can see that Germany are just turning it up a little notch. Back four for Canada, stretched to the limit right now to contain Buller and Klinsman, but then every country in the World Cup will be contained to. Con <laughs> be stretched to contain Buller and Klinsman. Mark Watson makes the run and clears it oh, back. And it's Forrest giving it right back to a wide open Watson. Mm. Boy, you can see how quickly the Germans are there and the pressure the Canadians are under. As we say, it's agreed upon six substitutions you can make in this friendly, so we'll be interested to see what substitutions both teams, Bob Leonard Uzi for Canada and Bertie Vox, for Germany make to possibly start the second half. Hassler at midfield. Mateus can't get by Dasovic. Hooper will chest it down. And then Mateus gives him a little push and the foul is on the German captain. Mr. Lodge still hasn't looked at his watch. We are in injury time of this first half. One nothing for Germany. Corazine heads it down, but no Canadian was following up. The goal scorer, Sammer, to Bremer, and has it taken away by Corazine. This is Dasovic. Hassler then takes it back. 
Bullard to Sammer. He looks for Klinsman. Bosler makes the run. Bosler across for Bowler. Sammer can't get there. It was Bowler first, and then Sammer. It remains 1-0 for Germany. And now Mr. Lodge has his first look at his watch. Referee Stephen Lodge from Barnsley, a true Yorkshireman, enjoying this first half. He doesn't want it to end. Now he does. <laughs> Good first half. Germany, obviously the superior team, had most of the ball. Good performance by Canada, 1-0 against the world champions. Not a bad effort at all. The only goal of the first half coming in the 30th minute, it was Matthias Sammer scoring for Germany. As you can see, Jurgen Kohler is still holding the back of his head as he leaves the field here at varsity after that collision with Randy Samuel. And for my money, the player of that first half was number 16, Matthias Sammer, the big red-haired midfielder, is back in defense. There he goes, number 16. He has held his cup of tea at halftime. He, he comes forward to support his forwards. What a game he's had. In front of a full house of 20,000 here at Varsity Stadium in Toronto, it's Germany 1, Canada nothing. Still to come. Highlights from Graham and the thoughts from Dick Howard. World Cup exhibition soccer here on TSN. When hunger strikes, wolf down the Snickers, loaded with peanuts, caramel nougat, and real milk chocolate, Snickers really satisfies. When your stomach growls, wolf one down. From now on, these will give you the world's closest shave. They're called microfins, and they're only on the new Gillette Sensor XL. These microfins precede the blades. As Sensor XL's spring-mounted blades adjust to your face, these soft, flexible fins gently stretch your skin so your beard stands up for the closest, most comfortable shave ever. Get closer. Get the new Gillette Sensor XL. In my country, England, that is, it's called football. Pokey, pokey, I am a joker! No rules, no coaches, just the players and the ball. To us, it was a challenge to totally reshape what you expect from domestic transportation. Five all new models with safety design and performance equal to cars costing twice as much after all just because you're on a budget doesn't mean you have to drive an ordinary car the shape of things to come from chevrolet Support amateur soccer by purchasing officially licensed merchandise with the Support Sport Adidas USA 94 fundraising program. Quality t-shirts and caps at great prices. Watch for the colored soccer ball brochure with the TSN World Cup program schedule on the back. For more information, call your provincial soccer association or support sport at 1-800-268-4518. Germany leading Canada one to nothing after the opening half. The same situation Canada faced after the first 45 minutes of the game against Brazil last Sunday in Edmonton. One of the major stories of the upcoming World Cup will be the heat and humidity in the games in the United States. To prepare for that, the Germans were looking for a place that would provide those conditions. They found that about an hour north of Toronto, Ottawa Saga is the site of their pre-World Cup training camp. With only nine days to go before their opening match in World Cup 94, the Germans have come to Nottawasaga Inn to fine-tune their game. But 90-hero Lothar Mateus is thinking only of the final tune-up. Well, in this moment, I think 
a lot of the friendly game with Canada. The, the first match in the World Championships is an important match for us and for the people on the television. Now, for me it's important in this moment the match uh, after tomorrow with Canada. Regardless of the outcome of today's friendly with Canada, strikers Rudy Voller and Jurgen Klinsmann form part of a powerful attack that has Germans believing in their chances to repeat. Oh, I think that we have uh, good chances to, to win the title also here in America because uh, 12 players of the last World Championships are now in this team. We are four years older, but uh, in Germany they said there's no old or young players, only good or bad players. <laughs> so we have many matches and uh, when you have lucky you can win and when you have no lucky you, you are the loser. <laughs> Dick Howard with me once again on the sidelines. Your impressions of the first half? Well, I think Graham summed it all up when he talked about Matthias Sammer. You know, so strong coming through midfield. And that's the thing that's impressed. Down at ground level, you see the mobility of this German team. It's very difficult for the Canadian defenders to pick them up, track them down. A real battle in midfield. If Bobby Lenarduzzi doesn't correct that at half time, it's going to be a long second half for the Canadian team. Let's get an idea of what the Germans are facing in the upcoming World Cup tournament because it's very interesting. A lot of people are talking about favorites and, yeah. and who should win. And strangely enough, the defending World Cup champions, in my mind anyway, aren't getting their due. Here's their World Cup schedule in the preliminary round anyway. They open against Bolivia, then Spain, and the Korean Republic. Now, Dick, you look at that, and you've got to think that of all the teams that are contenders, Germany has the easiest way out of the first round. I, I think they do. When you look at the, the situation there, they're going to be looking at the it's Bolivians this week. Uh, Betty Vogt's assistant, Rainer Bonhoff, is going to watch the game and see them play against the Swiss team, but it's a relatively easy opening for them. The Koreans should be no problem, and again, it'll be the physical aspects. You know, they're so strong, this German team. They win the one-on-one -on -one battles. That's going to win them, I think, the first two games. The Spanish game will be a tough one because Spain always very competitive, and that will probably be the two teams it will go through. Is it fair to characterize this German team as a team without, say, the big stars internationally, but a team that plays the game together as well as anyone? Well, I, I th it's impressive. You know, looking at it today, you've got, you know, players like uh, Mateus at the back, uh, Bremer, Klinsmann, but they're playing very much as a unit today and working Our for one another. It's going to make them very strong in the United States. We did mention it before, though. Canada trailed 1-0 against Brazil on Sunday. We'll see if the Canadians come out and come back in the second half. We're back with more as TSN's World Cup exhibition soccer coverage continues in just a moment. How would you like to create video albums as easily as your family photo albums? Now you can with JVC's Video Album Maker camcorders. They let you pick the shots you want, take out what you don't want, and transfer them to your home VCR in any order. JVC's Video Album Maker not only improves your videos before you shoot, but after you shoot as well. That's because JVC invented VHS. Now purchase a JVC camcorder and receive 10 bonus compact video cassettes. See store for details. Here's Andre Bunbury! Great moments in Canadian soccer he is brought to you by Agfa Film. Sweetie gets it across. Great moments in Canadian soccer has been brought to you by Agfa Film. Nothing escapes Agfa Film. To us, it was a challenge to totally reshape what you expect from domestic transportation. Five all new models with safety, design, and performance equal to cars costing twice as much. After all, just because you're on a budget doesn't mean you have to drive an ordinary car. The shape of things to come from Chevrolet. Unchained, linked to a native instinctive appetite to break free, wheeling, leaving the city's limits behind, sight disappearing in the rearview mirror. Why? Canada's future so bright, this fella has to wear shades. We'll see in the second half. Germany now leading though, 1-0 after the opening 45 minutes. 
Welcome back to Varsity Stadium in Toronto. Our TSN World Cup soccer coverage is just getting underway. We brought you the game last Sunday from Edmonton, and our coverage continues through the weekend here on TSN with more World Cup exhibition matches. First of all, coming up on Friday, we've got Canada against Spain. That's at 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 Pacific. And then we wrap it up with exhibition coverage June the 12th against Holland at 1.30 Eastern time, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. And don't forget to kick off the World Cup for you here on TSN, our complete World Cup preview show Thursday, June 16th, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific time. Everything you want to know about the upcoming World Cup. Everything you want to know about the first half, here is Vic and Graham. And what we found out, I think, is that this uh, German side, considering all their experience and that this indeed is a friendly, they are prepared and they don't have a lot of tuning up to do. No, they don't have a lot of tuning up to do. The, the Germans leave nothing to chance. They're, they're in, in mid-World Cup form already and the Canadians are having a rough time just to keep pace with them. It's been a, a wonderful opportunity to see players like Matthias and players like Klinsmann just work the ball superbly. We, uh, we were a little, you know, we didn't know what to expect from the Canadians. You know, adrenaline can only take you so far, and they have to be a little bit tired. But the first good opportunity did belong to Canada, and it was the hero from Sunday, the goal scorer, Eddie Berdusco. And Eddie took this chance so well, he spins very quickly, wraps it towards Ilgner, but unfortunately slices it just a touch, and it goes wider than near post. You uh, made the point that the, the Germans started to stretch out the Canadians just a little bit, and you, as you say, you can see them start to turn it up and work certain things as, as they get acclimatized. Remember, they only arrived this past Monday, and then they finally broke through in the 30th minute. And they always seem to have uh, an extra man. Uh, they always seem to create the overlap, and if you get the ball wide on the left wing to Bremer, then it's got danger all over it because he's got just a superb left foot. And that's exactly what happened in the 30th minute. Crosses it to the far post. Big Sam rises on challenge, powers it past Craig Forrest. No chance at all. This really is a beautiful cross by the fullback Bremer. Nobody picks up Sam at the far post. Craig Forrest has to stay on his line. The big midfielder rams it past Forrest. One to nil, Germany. And it is really true what you say. You know, you can spend so much time looking for people such as a Voller or a Klinsmann. <laughs> And there, here comes this Matthias Sammer, the former East German national. And where did he come from? Well, I tell you, he breaks so well from midfield. He, he comes forward like a tank. And, and everybody, the transition from defense to offense for this West German team, I used to call them, now we call them the German side, it, it's just unbelievable. And that's why they're the world champions and have got a great chance of being repeat world champions. As we say, both teams are allowed six Substitution. So we'll be very interested to see what kind of changes Bob Leonarduzzi and Bertie Voigt decide to make as we get ready for the second half. Yes, they have come from all over southern Ontario and upstate New York and Michigan. There's a large German population on hand for this sold-out game between Germany and Canada, Gord. There certainly is, Vic, and uh, we got it made on a beautiful day. On a sunny Friday afternoon in Toronto, we'll be back with more in just a moment. In my country, England that is, it's called football. Funky, funky, I am a jockey! No refs, no rules, no coaches, just the players and the ball. in Canadian soccer he is brought to you by Agfa Film. Sweeney gets it across. Kessley! Oh! Bunbury. Mobile! Oh! Great moments in Canadian soccer has been brought to you by Agfa Film. Nothing escapes Agfa Film. <laughs> Excuse me. When 
hunger strikes. The wolf down the Snickers, loaded with peanuts, caramel nougat, and real milk chocolate. The Snickers really satisfies. When your stomach growls, the wolf one down. From now on, these will give you the world's closest shave. They're called microfins, and they're only on the new Gillette Sensor XL. These microfins precede the blades. As Sensor XL's spring-mounted blades adjust to your face, these soft, flexible fins gently stretch your skin, so your beard stands up for the closest, most comfortable shave ever. Get closer. Get the new Gillette Sensor XL. Welcome back to Varsity Stadium in Toronto as the second half is just underway. Germany and Canada and quickly the Germans on the attack and Karl Heinz Riedel who takes over for Jürgen Klinsmann and he has a quick fresh legs and he has the first opportunity. Certainly did broke quickly through Karl Heinz Riedel but Randy Samuel step for step just put him off balance and caused him to shoot high and wide also into the game number five. Heiner in place of Jürgen Kohler. Kohler, of course, took that knock with Randy Samuel in the first half, so center back now is number five, Heiner. Jeff Honger for John Catliff, who has come into the game for Canada. There you see Thomas Helmer, the 29-year-old who plays for Bayern Munich. A substitution for Canada is number nine, John Catliff, who has come into the game to replace Eddie Verdusco in the starting forward position. And so it'll be interesting to see if that, as it did against Brazil, starts to draw some defenders because certainly he is one of the bigger players. Also into the game and making a run. That is Rudy Doloscat, who enters the game for Canada to begin this second half. Doloscat from the Montreal team, Montreal Impact of the APSL, scored the goal against Morocco a week ago. Colin Miller nods it down. This is Catliff with his first touch. Lyndon Hooper. Ian Frazier. Jeff Onger. Carlo Corazine. Miller. Onger. Onger can't get by the sliding tackle of Helmer. Rudy Doloscat enters the game, the 26-year-old, picking up just his second international cap. The Canadians now, Graham, you can see everybody pushing up. This is Frank Yalop. Oh, it was running so nicely, it seemed, and then he got all caught up. Strunz. Bosler makes the run. It's onside. This is Bosler. Bosler. Oh, well played by Craig Forrest. He came out, Graham, and cut down the angle so well. So both teams making two substitutions to start this second half lovely through ball Hassler with Frazier giving chase Buller and Riedel are in the box Hassler one two Hassler trying to turn and my goodness Frazier stood right there with him and took it away Berthold wins the ball Frazier now nods it upfield and lovely touch by the Germans to regain control oh look at that he played it left, Hassler looking for Voller, and Voller went right. Frank Yallop to midfield. So it's Helmer and Riedel in for Germany. Catliff and Doliscat for the Canadians as they look for Catliff and Corazine at the far post. John Catliff, the 29-year-old who plays for the Vancouver 86ers, a former Golden Boot winner as top scorer twice in the Canadian Soccer League in 1988 and 1990. 
and certainly made a big difference winning balls in the air when he came on in the second half against Brazil. Interesting to see that Bobby Lanadozzi has taken off young Mark Watson and put Rudy Dulliscat in the right back position for Canada. Catliff, of course, assumes his normal place as the target man. But it'll be interesting as Jeff Onger's tackle brings down Thomas Struns. Well, Jeff Onger's not a tackler. That's not his forte, and uh, it's shown two, three times today, just a little late there. You can see Jeff Onger going for the ball. Struns gets to it first. Onger just way late as he dives in, and... Uh, that's a forwards tackle on a fullback. Had it been the other way around, perhaps there would have been no incident at all. Struns loves to come forward. Scores many, many goals for VfB Stuttgart. The 26-year-old Thomas Struns. And Struns will put it into play to Berthold. And back to Struns. Bosler and Struns quickly shaking off the injury curves at far post. Oh, and Dulliscat. Thirty votes not happy with the attack, figuring they may have been able to do more with it. I think Bertie Volks was annoyed that three players all went to the same position. There was no depth in their attack there. One ball passed them away. Right. To the far post. It rattles around, and now it's Frazier off his knees, and Nick Dasevich, under some quick pressure, does well to get it to Dolisket to Colin Miller. Plays it square, Randy Samuel. Cooper is on the right. Catliff joins him there. Corazine and Dolisket are wide left. Colin Miller calls for it. Berthold, this is Dolisket. He scored. Oh! With the right foot, it curved away from that top right corner, Rudy Dulliscat. And he's lining up at right back. All of a sudden, he shows up on the left wing. Scored, of course, in Canada's one-all tie with Morocco. And Bobby, I think, uh, quite encouraged by the start of the second half. The Germans seem to have raised their, their game a notch, but so far, it's still one to nil. Struns with Samuel giving chase and Randy Samuel who plays his football, his soccer in Holland with Fortuna Sittard is, makes a nice sliding tackle. Quickly taken, Bowler trying to bust his way through a couple of Canadian fenders and can't. Helmer to Berthold near side, Bosler through the middle for Matthäus. Matthäus. And Hooper, Matthäus, and Hooper, stride for stride, little Lyndon Hooper. Watching Matthäus, and now he plays it back for Helmer. He'll go wide left, Bremer, back to Helmer. Now this is the fullback now, has made this run. Helmer curves it, looking for Riedel, and oh my, how close it was. And it will go to Canada, Dick Howard. Bobby Lenarduzzi at the start of the second half, uh, any changes? No, he said he wants the team to play as they played in the first half. Obviously concerned about Sammer's runs, and he's just asking the defenders to pass him on so that he's always covered. We saw what happens, obviously, if you let him free. But nothing different from the Canadian team for the second half. Craig Forrest puts the ball back in play. Catliff flicks it forward, and see, there's the height. Those balls just weren't won in the first half. So that is something that Leonard Doozy has to be happy for, as he looks to possibly make another substitution. Ian Carter from Peterborough in England. Oops. Little obstruction by Nick Dasevich against uh, little Thomas Hessler. Boy, what a game. He's back and forward like a robot, Thomas Hester. What a good little player. Berthold. Bosler Outside. shifted forward, and it is on this near side. Thomas Struns, and it's remarkable, Graham. There they are, they, the back four overlapping. But then again, we saw that with 
Brazil as well as we have now the third substitution for Canada and coming out of the game wearing number 14 Ian Frazier and coming in wearing number three the 26 year old Ian Carter a former all-star in the Canadian Soccer League in 1992 and that's rather strange because Watson and Fraser two of the back four who were so superb against Brazil are now in the showers and Ian Carter and Rudy Dulliscat have got the responsibility of preventing the Germans breaking on the wings and that's going to be a big responsibility because you can only see the Germans getting stronger as this game goes along. Well, they're starting to find their legs after their flight from Germany arriving around noon on Monday. Had a full day of practice on Tuesday, and now it's a game condition here on Wednesday in Toronto as Riedel goes over the outstretched leg of Jeff Onger. And unfortunately, as we mentioned before, it's Jeff Onger who has to make the final tackle, and he's he's not really a tackler. That was once again an awkward tackle that a fullback wouldn't have made. But I tell you, number 16, Matthias Sammer, he promises to be a star in this upcoming World Cup. Easily identified with his reddish hair, tall, strong, he just powers forward. Get out, Frank, get out! Mario Bosler lays oh. it off. This is Mateos. He has Struns wide right as Buller and Riedel make runs into the area. Chips it back for Struns and Ian Carter. Will clear, chested by Mateos de Hassler. Look at this lovely through ball. And getting there was Jeff Onger. And it'll go as a corner. As Bosler forced to go the long way around. And well done, Jeff. That was like a fullback. Perfect timing because otherwise, like the last two you made, it would have been a penalty kick. Nice ball inside. Good tackle by Jeff Onger to prevent Manley Basler from breaking clear. Basler, the 25-year-old preventer Bremen, will take this corner. Early in the second half, we played about 10 minutes. To the far post, getting up with Nick Dasovich in front of Hassler. And there they want the, the normal corner. The big men go to the near post. All the big Canadians go to the near post. And little Thomas Hassler challenged for the cross. Forrest. <laughs> in front of Riedel. Yeah, but Riedel got up there just in case it flicked off. Greg Forrest's fingertips. Big center forward. Carl Heinz Riedel. Bowler, Hassler, and gives it back, finds his feet enough to give it back, and he looks like he may have turned a ankle on that play, Graham. Oh, okay, Here's okay. an opportunity, Bosler, oh. oh my goodness. And Riedel is saying you didn't have to hit it that hard. You could have maybe done something a little bit more quiet with it. But there's concern for the Germans because of the injury to Hassler. Well, this ball sort of flicks off Ian Carter right to number 21 Mario Basler a normal striker would just have smoothed it into the far post but he tries to blast it in and they uh, hooked it miserably wide unfortunately Thomas Hassler in, in creating the first move of that attack uh, I think he may have uh, twisted an ankle we've seen one or two like that as he stretched to cut it with the outside of his foot and once again Bertie Vogt sweating bullets on the bench Thomas Hassler from AS Roma the 89 German footballer of the year is down Germany leads 1-0 when I was young, often I dreamed of being someone. This country offered me that opportunity, and I am proud to be a Canadian. But every four years, I can't help but think of my youth, my friends, and my first love. Italia. Viva l'Italia. MasterCard is a proud sponsor of the 1994 World Cup and salutes all those Canadians who feel this is more than a game, but part of themselves. Hassler is up, Thomas Hassler, and back in position for the, the Germans as we are underway. We have played 14 minutes of this second half from Varsity Stadium in Toronto, and it remains 1-0 
Germany on the first half goal by Matthäus Sammer. Lothar Matthäus. Bremer ahead for Hassler. And the offside near side linesman, Mr. Brian Wigington from Bristol makes the call as the Canadians get ready to make another substitution. Getting ready to come in is Dominic Mobilio. And he'll likely replace Carlo Corazine up front. For Canada, Lyndon Hooper, Ian Carter. Corazine. And now the substitution, and indeed, Graham, it will be. Carlo Corazine coming out for Dominic Mobilio. And you need a big piece of paper to put these changes on. We normally have 11 names on each side, but uh, with six substitutes, uh, I think we're going to be pretty squeezed to get them all in. But it's a great idea for Bobby Lenarduzzi to get all of his players this invaluable experience playing against the world champions. And of course, Berti Vox wants to see his squad perform too. Jeff Onger, a nice little bit of one two just fails to work as Struns gets over Bertold oh a giveaway Dasevich oh, ho, ho, ho. Mateos one bounce the other way and it may have been a great opportunity but Mateos got the bounce of the ball there Dasevich tried to curl it in and Dominic Mobilio is saying you could have given it right back a little bit of sloppy play there as both sides couldn't get hold of the ball Oh. Well, it's Boulder <laughs> and Onger, and Rudy is called for the foul. A couple of rather crude tackles by Mr. Voller. Obviously taking this game seriously, and so he should. He's sort of swamped out by the red shirts here as Jeff Onger comes in, and Voller just whips the ankles from under him. I don't mind that. As a former striker, I like to see the strikers getting their own back now and again. Rudy Doliscat was wide right. He plays the angle ball to Hooper and Doliscat following up. Hassler there. Dasevich is wide right. This is Doliscat. Now he needs some help. Doliscat will lay it off for Colin Miller. Colin Miller rattles it through and it'll just run too Long far again. and it goes off the defender. It will be a corner for Canada. Well, Rudy Doliscat did have some help there. He had Nick Dasevich standing wide on the right wing screaming for it. And you'd think they'd understand each other. They both play for the Montreal Impact. So Catliff is up. So is Robilio. Doliscat. Samuel is up for Canada. Near post and headed away. Ian Carter. Oh, he couldn't control. Now this is Hooper. Oh, Hooper gives it right mm. back. But Mateos is there to that's clean up the loose ball. That's what he's there for. Right now he's playing as a sweeper and he's doing a superb job. Catliff, Berthold. It's interesting, Graham. It's changed a little bit at the back now with Catliff into the game for Canada. The Germans seem to be a little bit more concerned as Dasevich does well to get away from Bremer. Lyndon Hooper, Ian Carter. As this crowd of 20,000 start to come alive, maybe they can sense the Canadians starting to take the game a little bit to the Germans. And then Mobilio gives it away. Bowler can't turn as Samuel does very well. Randy Samuel to shield the ball from Rudy Bowler. Ian Carter for Catlick, but he won't win this race. Ooh, the strength of Thomas Helmer. My apologies, Thomas, for calling you Heiner coming into the game. I couldn't read my own writing. Thomas Helmer, of course, a very strong center back and certainly out muscled John Catlick on that occasion. Matthäus, Bosler, Sammer, Rudy Vullen. <laughs> and Randy Samuel's challenge is called. Hassler, Bremer, wide left for Riedel. Karl-Heinz Riedel, Yallop is over. Hassler runs up, so does Vuller. Hassler has the eighth battle now, and Cooper will win it from Hassler and play it back for Forrest to midfield yes 
for the one of the few times Catliff wins the ball from Berthold in the air. Ooh, and Basler took uh, no chances there. He wanted nothing to do with that tackle by Ian Carter. Just flipped it through to nobody. Jeff Hunter now is back. Uh oh, Samuel. It sort of just skipped away from his right foot, but he recovered in time. Healed back by Catliff. Ahead for Mobilio. It doesn't work. And this is Carter who whose feet couldn't keep up with what he wanted to do. Carter. Mobilio, the challenge from Helmer, and it'll be a throw-in for Canada. And the crowd getting it into it now as Canada enjoying more possession of the ball. Why is that? I don't know. I, I really don't know. Uh, Germany, I thought, had raised the level of the game, but Canada obviously has raised the level of their game, and it looks like David Norman is going to come into the, the game. Well, this first substitution will be by Germany as number 70, Martin Wagner from Kaiserslautern comes in for Hassler. For Thomas Hassler. So 17, Martin Wagner is in. And Jeff Onger comes out of the game and in comes David Norman, Mr. Dynamo in midfield. Both substitutions at 20 minutes of the second. David Norman. The 32-year-old member of the 86 World Cup team in Mexico currently plays with the Vancouver 86ers. Frank Yellup will play it all the way back. And so Canada has now made five substitutions, Graham, and they're allowed one more. They may call you yet. You got your boots? I hope they don't make another one. I got nowhere to put them down on my team sheet. Everything's full up here. Rudy, watch your back! <laughs> Keep back! Hear the shouts, Rudy, watch your back, mm -hmm. Rudy, watch your back. You have to call to each other. You have to let people know who's behind you, who's available. And Craig Forrest doing a superb job of that right now. He's calling to his defenders, letting them know who's making the blind run. He has to do that. He's the general at the back. Berthold. Bruns played it forward. <laughs> and, uh, for once, Samar didn't want to go forward. He said, I've gone forward enough. I'm going to stay back here and get my breath back. Goalkeeper, it's so important that he talks to his defenders, pulls them around, pushes them here, there, because he's got the whole of the field in front of him. And Craig Forrest does it very well. We talked at halftime about this week-long stay by the Germans near Toronto. It's costing them about $90,000 as they have taken over complete. 90 rooms at the Nottawa Saga Inn as Mateus clears. And knowing the Germans, it'll be $90,000 well spent. They, they have obviously researched the locations. It's similar to where they're going to be in Chicago, probably, and they leave nothing to chance. Struns for Bosler and the give and go doesn't uh, Struns looks like he may have pulled an ankle or a, a hamstring and quickly the training staff and the Germans are shorthanded Hooper give and go Mobilio edge of the box close it back goal Colin Miller had a look at it another possible injury problem for the Germans it remains one nothing in front of a sold out 20,000 in Toronto moments in Canadian soccer he is brought to you by Agfa Film. Sweeney gets it across. Oh. Great moments in Canadian soccer has been brought to you by Agfa Film. Nothing escapes Agfa Film. Treatment continues on Thomas Struns after he seemed to turn his ankle. That's why that give and go really didn't work, Graham. Oh, well, I think that the surface under the grass is rather hard. He, he played it away, and then he reaches for the back of his leg, and it looked as if that could well be a hamstring pull. Struns down in agony, but 
He's still on the touch line now, and Germany have had to make another substitute. And coming into the game is Maurizio Gardino. Maurizio Gardino wearing number 15. And this is the difference between a real game and an inter-squad game. You stretch for balls that you wouldn't stretch for in an inter-squad game, and full muscles will result. There's Maurizio Gaudinho, plays for Eintracht Frankfurt. Strong midfielder, loves to come forward. Mateo's under pressure on this near sideline. Throw into Canada. Dasovic up to apply a little pressure to Bodo Wilkner. Oh, 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 oh. As Doliscat in Yallop. Get a little confused. And now it's Colin Miller lays it square for Doliscat. Colin Miller. Gadino with his first touch. This through Wagner. Goal. Following up neatly, there's Holder. Riedel has made a run, and now the foul is on the Canadian. Well, Rudy, if you're going to give it, you're going to have to take it. That's two to one in your favor still. Bremer will take this free kick. Riedel moves up. Gaudino. Here comes Berthold. Here comes the big man. Look at it. Whoa, they're all up there. Elmer is up, and here comes Sammer. Cuts it in. And up and over Voller. And it'll be a throw in. And you could hear Craig Forrest. Rudy, you don't have to dive in there. Craig Forrest shouting all the time. David Norman. As you can hear him tell, David Norman, you've got time to clear. What a great ball by Matthias to switch the angle. Time! Time! And again, David Norman, you have lent plenty of time to bring it up this left side, says Craig Forrest, Lyndon Hooper, David Norman, Carter, oh, Riedel is there to apply some pressure. And now Riedel, his right ankle, and he'll try to walk it off. I get a feeling they may be using the wrong studs or cleats, as the North Americans call it. We've Can't seen lift. five ankle injuries. Miller plays it square for Randy Samuel. Dulliscat is wide right. He chips it into the middle, looking for Catliff. Sammer. Mateus now brings it to midfield. Gaudino. Bosler. Dick Howard. Yes, Vic, a good point there by Graham about studs. The German, most of the players are using six studs. The Canadian players using a multi-stud, and I think it's quite a hard surface, and it certainly contributed to Strunz's injury. He looked as though it was a hamstring. He was being treated down here by the bench, but certainly uh, the choice of boots today was a factor and maybe could have caused a couple of these injuries we've been seeing recently. Good point, Graham. Little give and go. Riedel tries to heal it through for Voller and can't. Oh, what a ball. What, what a, a ball lovely by ball by Mateus as he finds Wagner wide on the left. And then Yallop will clear for Canada. And uh, Randy Samuel having a quick glance over to the near side here for Brian Wigington. Obviously, the Canadians thought that was offside. And the tackle's now getting a little lazy as the players tire. Lyndon Hooper there. Nothing vicious as he brings down uh, Basler. Actually, it's Samer who turns well. Lyndon Hooper a little late, but tiredness coming into play now, and the timing just goes a little. And another substitution for Canada. Their final substitution as Lyndon Hooper comes out of the game, and John Limniatis, one of the veterans of this Canadian national side, played most of his professional career in Greece, now plays with the Montreal Impact of the APSL. John Limniatis is into the game for Lyndon Hooper. And Lyndon Hooper had a great game. Did really well in midfield, and uh, he deserves a rest now. Colin! That's it! Bosler with the free kick. And rattles it off of Catliff and that three-man wall. That is awesome. by Canada. 
And that the is offside, offside is called by the near side linesman, Mr. Brian Wigington. And John Catliff will not enjoy that. His knee swollen as it is, and Bassler just wrapped that free kick right onto his knee. Pateos, okay. then David Norman following up. John Limniatis will pick up his 34th cap for Canada. And he just slots into Lyndon Hooper's place in midfield. Played very well in the first half against Brazil, filling the hole on the right wing, preventing the Brazilian fullback from overlapping too often. He played with Panathalakos in Greece for about four years and now has returned to Canada. Easy for you to say. Thank you. Riedel turns. Yallop following him, and now David Norman comes back, and Riedel still in control, and this time it goes off of Ian Carter, and it'll be a corner for Germany. Approximately 15 minutes remaining. Here in this second half, it remains 1-0, the only goal by Matthias Sammer in the 30th minute. Mario Bossler to take this corner for Germany. Headed away by Frank Yellup, who has played very well in the back four for Canada. Norman chips it ahead, looking for Rudy Dallascat, and then Brema in control, gives it to the captain, Lothar Mateus. Good run. Brema, oh, what a lovely run. Caldino, Boulder. Oh, yes, and there is Greg Forrest, who read it wonderfully, to snatch it away from Rudy Fuller. What a heads-up play by Mauricio Gaudino. Beautiful run, and instead of trying to hit it from a bad angle, laid it square to Vula. Forrest read it beautifully. Berthold, Bosler. Vuller and Riedel are now the forwards as Berthold makes a, an overlapping run. Riedel makes his starting run for the top of the area and it's cut away by randy samuel ian carter david norman and back chips it up for catliff catliff can control and sammer the goal scorer is there for germany and it'll go as a canadian throw in john limniatis oh. Limniatis has absolutely no time. And then Samuel. And the offside is on Bowler, who is actually in and behind Samuel. Sometimes you wonder if uh, Bowler's speed punishes him a little bit because he's so quick off the mark. Just as the ball's played, he makes his run and he appears offside when the ball gets there. Brema and Dasovic in midfield. Well, Bowler wasn't really expected to be part of this side this year, was he? Oh, yeah. I, I don't think you can leave out a striker like Rudy Bowler, and he combines so well with Jürgen Klinsmann. Wagner on the far side and Doliskat, and Wagner will keep it in play. But I thought he had retired. He didn't want any more of international competition. Well, when the World Cup comes around, that's not really international competition. That is the elite. And for him to get it, another chance at the World Cup final, I think I think I would make a comeback if I could get a chance. This is something special, the World Cup, and, and Buller can contribute. There's no doubt about it. And so you think that it will be Buller and Klinsman up front and not Klinsman and Riedel? No, I think the first choice would be Buller and Klinsman. Riedel is great coming off the bench, but I think he would start with Buller and Klinsman. Gaudino. Lays it back for Bosler. Now Riedel and Voller are in the middle. Riedel at the far post will try and keep it in play and does. Plays it back. This is Bremer. Bremer cuts it in. Cleared away by Limniadis. Bosler forward. Ian Carter to take control for Canada. And he has John Catliff. Ooh. David Norman. A 50-50 ball. And Bosler and Norman are both down. Well, Bassler stretched. He, it was never his ball. It was always David Norman's ball. Bassler stretched. Norman got to it first. Bassler followed through, and it looked as if he's 
putt more than David Norman is, but this was never Basler's goal. Norman gets to first place it away. Basler dives in late and looks as if he may have twisted his knee and uh, Bentley Box is not at all pleased with the amount of players who are going down. They're going down like nine pins. And you could see that Bosler immediately called for the bench and the training staff and out very quickly. Well, all Both players remain down and being treated by the prospective staffs of Germany and Canada. Reminder, stay with us right after the game for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Armorall. To prove that Armorall and that's that X keeps your dad looking clean, we're here at the Densier Go 500. Well, there you have it. Armorall with Dust Ad X keeps your dash looking clean. Both coaches are up and off their benches as it appears that the Germans will make a substitution to replace Bosler and it's interesting now they've brought the backboard in for Bosler and this may be more serious possibly broken I don't want to speculate though probably a badly torn knee the, the problem with Basler's tackle was that that he really wasn't in position to make the tackle David Norman got to the ball first Basler was over stretching he he just went a little too far and dangerous and just before the World Cup this is the thing that the coaches dread now getting ready to come into the game and wearing a number 11 okay. is Stefan Kuntz the 31 year old from Kaiserslautern as he will replace Hassler it's interesting because when you see the foot, it actually catches Norman almost at waist height. He certainly was late in coming in. Norman had played the ball. Perhaps he tried to get out of Norman's way and, and caught him as Norman went fast, but he certainly was at full stretch, and, and you never like to see this in any sport. And prior to the World Cup, I'm sure that our German uh, viewers will be a little concerned that Mario Basler is being carried off now this on a stretcher. Raises, during this raises the question, can they, the Germans, appeal to the international body and say, because of injury, we need to replace one of our people prior to the World Cup? Well, they can appeal, but whether or not uh, FIFA have allowed, will allow them to replace, uh, that's another thing, because they have submitted their final lineup, their final lineup squad with official numbers is gone and the doors closed. So 22 players had to be declared as of last week, last Friday night, midnight, to the FIFA office in Switzerland. David Norman, Catliff, Limniatis gets away from the push of Gaudino, Ian Carter. Floats it across, and it actually, he tried to hit Dasovic, but it curved the wrong way. <laughs> to this near sideline, and it'll be Ian Carter. Dick Howard, you have an update on the injury? Yes, Vic, I was chatting to Dr. Rudy Giddens, the Canadian doctor. He doesn't think it's a break the way uh, the player went in. Basler, he thinks he might have just ex overextended himself and obviously as a precaution carried him off. But uh, hopefully it's not a case where it's a serious injury and he'll be missing the World Cup. But that's the word from uh, Dr. Rudy Giddens. Back to you, Vic. Thank you, Dick. As the Germans come back on the attack, Stefan Kuntz, who replaced Basler, has his first touch. Now it's Fuller. Sliding it through for Gadanino. Keeps it in play. And it'll be a throw in as Ian Carter got over for Canada. Well, Bertie Vox may be worried, but I'm sure this is the kind of contest he wanted going into the World Cup. He doesn't want to have a walkover. He wants to have a serious challenge. And Canada's certainly giving his side a serious challenge. Little give and go. Brema and Riedel doesn't work. Ian Carter. Steps away from Gaudino. Now it's Mobilio. Oh, Mobilio 
Berthold pushed it back and a little bit too far as Mobilio couldn't make up the space. But Eldner is very good at coming out and helping his defense when they're under pressure like that. He, he accepts the ball back and controls it well. Wagner. Wagner chips it far post. This is Bowler. Heels it back. Gaudino. Gaudino left foot. Oh, Gaudino. Unlucky. That, was, that would have been a classic goal. Sold David Norman the dummy and then tried to curve it into the top corner and you can see the crowd just loving it. Great effort, Maurizio. It really was. Watch Fuller back heel it. Gaudinho pretends he's going to shoot, cuts it past David Norman, then tries to curl it into the top corner. Just doesn't quite get enough bend on it, but that would have been a great goal. I love to see players try and bend it into the top there. Lothar Mateos, I'm a little surprised, Graham, that the captain is going to play what it seems to be this entire game. Well, I'm a little surprised that he's played the entire game without really making what the kind of contribution you'd expect Lothar Mateos to make. He's a brilliant player, but he really hasn't taken charge of the game as he should. We've only seen on maybe one or two occasions where he has brought the play up with him and actually led the attack. And as you say, it might be more to do with the way the Canadians are playing. Or else he's just uh, making sure that he conserves his energy. He's got seven games to go in the World Cup, and an old pro like Matthias is not going to overstretch himself today. Catliff, Mobilio, Dasovic, he lays it back. This is Mobilio. Now, can he turn and do something with it? Mobilio! Corner, corner kick. <laughs> Off of the foot of Thomas Helmer. And Matthias Sammer is screaming at referee Stephen Lodge. It was obviously a, a corner kick. Even Matthias is complaining to the referee. Limniatis near post and headed away by Matthias. David Norman, Limniatis looking for Mobilio. Oh, a couple of German defenders get all tied up there in trying to clear. And now it's curved back by Colin Miller. Dick Howard. Yes, Vic, I was just chatting to members of the medical staff of the German team. They're taking him to the hospital just for a cautionary x-rays. They don't think it's a break. They're concerned about the knee area and the area just below the knee. And uh, that's what's going to happen now with Mario Basler. But hopefully not a break. They don't think so at the present time. Oh, thank you, Vic. Thank you, Doloscat. Feeling and hearing. Rudy Voller quickly approach, just clears it wide left. Well, there's, there's someone in the in the crowd blowing a whistle, and yes. it's really disconcerting for the players. Wagner trying to get through. Riedel gets it back. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible to keep that out. Voller, Riedel, they all had a go at it. And finally, it's deflected past. Rudy Voller can't believe that it's not 2-0 Germany. Well, how does this stay out? Has to be a goal, you think. Riedel gets the first chance, then it rebounds off. <laughs> Samuel to Vula, shakes his head in disgust. And Craig Forrest thanks Ian Carter now to this far post. And controlled by Limniatis to Mobilio. Interesting that Dasovic now has come wide left as they try to spring Colin Miller. And here's an opportunity for Canada. Mobilio and Wagner with the sliding tackle for Germany. Mobilio lays it off. Limniatis. Mobilio. Catliff is at the far post, and that's where they're going to look. Oh, anything within the five yard box is meat and potatoes for Otto Ilgner, German goalkeeper. Very, very good in the air. Brilliant hands. We're under three minutes here at Varsity Stadium on the campus of the University of Toronto. And I'm sure, again, injury time to be added on by Mr. Stephen Lodge. It remains 1-0 Germany on the goal by Matthias Sammer in the 30th minute. And Sammer with the touch now at midfield for Bremer as the Germans start to move their people around. And Bremer now has come to the right. Matthias moves up into play, Graham. 
David Norman, wide right. Nick Dasovich, Wagner there. Rudy Dolaskat makes the run. Kuntz, step for step, Dolaskat. Oh, in the sliding tackle as Helmer gets over. Uh, Dominic Mobilio just limped off, obviously in pain. Uh, this field certainly has taken its toll today, and uh, if you thought this was a friendly, <laughs> think again, folks. And the Canadians now forced to play it, and an extra ball has come on the field. The referee not seeing it, and... <laughs> Bremer just casually knocks it back out of touch. Give one to each side, then we'll have a great time out here. Oh, unlucky. Well played. The Canadians have made their no. six substitutions as Limney Alice couldn't control the bounce of the ball, and he'll play it back for Yallop. Mobilio remains on the bench, so the Canadians will appear to play the rest of this game one man short, Graham. But as you'd expect, the Canadians are a little more comfortable with this temperature and this weather. The Germans still trying to get acclimatized. Uh, look a little weary right now. Uh, they're still winning 1-0, but uh, they're not taking charge of the game as you'd expect at this at this late stage anyway. Oh, look at that. Yeah, Dolaskat takes it in the face, and then as he turned... And now the foul. Dick Howard. Yes, Vic. Uh, Betty Vogts speaking to the official about uh, some of the challenges of the Canadian team. Obviously, very competitive game. But uh, he's expressed some concern with the injuries. But I would be more concerned with the footwear for the German team. You know, we talked earlier about the six studs as opposed to multi. And it's affecting the challenges uh, and their balance on the game. Colin Miller it. curves it in. John Catliff gets up and another clash of heads. Catliff is still down as he got up with Mateus. Well, we saw Jurgen Kor and Samuel clash in a similar situation when the ball hangs up there in the center half and the center forward both go for it. Their eyes on the ball, they really don't see the other player there. Colin Miller chips the free kick in. Catliff goes for it strongly. Mateus challenges him and heads collide and down they go. Well, you, if you thought it was a friendly, no way. There's no such thing. Matthias and Catliff determined it was going to be their ball. Matthias is. Well, that's dangerous. Sorry, Graham. Matthias is the first player up. But John Catliff is still down and being treated by the Canadian training staff. Actually, Lothar Matthias did very well to even get half of that ball against Catliff in the air. No comparison size. It's, and the former little midfielder doing a superb job at the back. Dr. Jeff Haig is now out to have a look at Catliff and now out as well is Bertie Voigt. You know, they compare Lothar Matthias with the uh, the kind of Frank Spessenberg. They, they both started as midfield players, both went back to play as sweeper. Uh, Lothar Mateus, more of a workman-like player. Frank Beckenberg, majestic as he used to come striding forward, but certainly both of them have done so well for this German side and past German sides. And both of them able to talk about it. That it'll be something that John Catliff will remember, certainly, that he got a chance to play and indeed clashed yeah. heads with Lothar <laughs> Mateus. With Lothar Mateus. <laughs> Final few moments here in Toronto, and Colin Miller will clear for Canada. Dominic Mobilio is back into the game for Canada, so sides now even up. Limping around, so I don't think Dominic is going to be much of a factor. He's just on to make the numbers up. Hit it, hit it. Here's hit. a chance, and he does. Riedel had a go from about 35 yards out.
I think the Germans and Bertie Voigt can't wait now until this one is over. Limniatis barges through Sammer. Kunz at midfield with Colin.